Good afternoon. My name is Nicole Collier. I am the chair of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus. I'm here joined with members from the Texas Legislative Black Caucus, Representative Sean Ferry, Representative Jarvis Johnson, Senator Royce West, Representative Cheryl Cole, and Representative Ron Reynolds, and also the president of the NAACP of Texas, Gary Bledsoe. And we are here today to talk about the bills that have been filed during the special session. One, our first point of contention is that we do not believe that there is a need for any type of election uh, legislation during a special session. We have so many other matters that we could be uh, discussing and addressing uh, in Texas, but yet we are here at the call of the governor uh, to address his list of items that are on his agenda uh, that he would like to have considered. And I will point out that there are quite a few of these items that were considered in the legislature. We had already, we've already taken them up and considered them, but yet because he didn't get what he wanted, he's pulled, brought us back to uh, reconsider them. And we have uh, serious concerns with the measures that have been filed in HB3 in the House, which is the election bill, and then the Senate Bill 1 in uh, the Senate. Uh, different election bills, uh, they address different things, but as a former presiding judge myself, I've, I've worked at elections, I have very serious concerns with the criminal penalties that have been added to the provisions of this bill for presiding judges. Uh, we already have trouble finding people to work in elections and then to add additional criminal penalties onto that, it's gonna make it even difficult, more difficult. So we know that these uh, bills are not about making it easier to vote. It are about making it harder. They do not promote voter uh, participation or voter access. They actually hinder that. So we are here in solidarity and strong opposition to the legislation that has been filed. Uh, and in response, we filed our own legislation. Uh, our, our Senate Democrats uh, of the Texas Legislature have filed the Fair Elections Act, and I want to bring Senator, the Barbara Jordan Fair Elections Act, and I want to bring Senator Royce West up to talk about that bill. Madam Chair, thank you very much, and other members of the caucus. Uh, the Texas Democratic Legislative Caucus today, uh, Senate Democratic Caucus, it's been a long day, uh, filed the Barbara Jordan Fair Elections Act today. Let me just kind of give you the premise behind it. The big lie continues to be a big lie. And I don't care whether you're in Dallas at CPAC or wherever it is, it's still a big lie. It's real ironic that around this country, we've had Republicans, secretaries of states, we've had lawsuits that have some 60 that have been dismissed. We've had the former henchman of Trump, Barr, do everything in his power to help him help Trump maintain power to say that this was a fair election. The other Republican administrators around the states, around these various states, Georgia in particular, and Arizona, Pennsylvania, have said that there were fair elections. And what has been the response by Republicans. The response has been wanting to run individuals against them that basically would take an oath that the election was stolen, that it's not a big lie. And what that ends up doing is obviously further damage to our democracy. When you think about those courageous Republicans that said, I will not buy off on the big lie, but I will do what's in the best interest of democracy and carry out the responsibilities of my office. You say, what, what does it have to do with where we are in Texas? Well, what it has to do with is that we had a Secretary of State that was nominated by the governor in the state of Texas, Sarah Hughes, I think her name was. And she was asked the question whether or not the elections in Texas were fair and smooth and secure. She said, yes. And guess what? For some strange reason, she couldn't get a vote out of the Republican-controlled Senate Nominations Committee, similar to what's been happening to other persons who want to do a fair job. 
what we have done with the Barbara Jordan Fair Elections Act is talk about we want to make certain that for once and for all we come, start coming out of the past and begin looking currently at what's going on in it and well into the future. It's amazing that we can use technology for everything in this country, but we can't use technology in order to make certain that voting is accessible and convenient to everyone. Like online registration, online voting, are some of the provisions that we've placed in the Barbara Jordan Act. The issues of mail-in ballots, why shouldn't mail-in ballots be universally available to all people to make it more convenient to vote, as opposed to suppressing the ability to vote? It would be one thing if there was a problem in Texas in terms of voting, but there is no problem. There is no problem. Uh, the Nintendo governor said that we had record turnout. So if we had record turnout with no problem, what are we trying to fix? We're trying to find a solution for a problem that does not exist. But yet we still restrict the right to vote for citizens in this state. While on one hand saying that we are a technology friendly state that will take the front end and as it relates to providing opportunities and technology and different innovations, but we can't use that same technology to put together a transparent, fair, and secure election system. When you start talking about, in both of these bills, you start talking about doing away with some of the innovative ideas that occurred in Harris County, the motor voter, okay? If there are problems with motor voter, let's identify what the problems are and fix the problems, as opposed to saying that we, we can't use that as, as a tool. There was, they said there was an issue with 24-hour voting. If there are issues with it, then let's not throw it out. Let's continue to use it as a tool and fix the problems. But what you should know is this, America, is that more minorities use the motor voter apparatus run in Harris County than any other African Americans right. and Latinos right. use that. But now they want to throw that out as a method of voting in this state. The bill also addresses the issue of students. We want to make certain that students that are almost 18 years old will be 18 by the next election. They're able to get a state identification card so they can vote. That's not in the other bills. We want to make certain that if we're going to have these poll watchers, and you've heard a lot about it, and I can assure you that there will be some differences between poll watchers and voters, especially if they have a stranger looking over their shoulder. And those differences will manifest themselves in primaries and also in general elections. And so what we propose in the Barbara Jordan Fair Election Act is something real simple. Train them. Have a statewide training course that you put online and make certain that they get a certification online before, and they present that certification to the election judge at the precinct, showing that they've been certified. There's going to be some issues between election workers, whether they're certified or not, that want to go to court and get mandamuses, injunctions, and things like that, because you know there will be organizations that will be supporting those individuals and encouraging them to go to court and file against the election judge, election workers at the polling places. Well, we put a provision in the bill that whatever governmental entity points the election judges and the workers will need to indemnify those workers if lawsuits are filed against them. I think those are common sense measures that should be placed in these bills. If indeed we even need these bills, and the fact of the matter is we don't need the bills, mm -hmm. but we should be looking towards the future and using current technology in order to make certain that we modernize 
our voting processes here in the state of Texas, as opposed to continuing to try to suppress the vote. Thank you so much, Senator. So as you can see, we're looking for parity. We're looking for parity when it comes down to these partisan poll watch watchers. Uh, you know, if they can get a warning for violating the law, then there should be a warning for the presiding judge as well. So whatever there is good for them should be good for us. So that's some of the things that we're looking for. I'd like to also bring up uh, Representative Ron Reynolds, who is the vice chair of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus for some comments. Thank you, Chair Collier. And I want to thank you uh, for your uh, great leadership with the Texas Legislative Black Caucus. This bill will have tremendous negative impact among black and brown communities, but particularly African Americans. And Chair Collier uh, was in those hearings uh, when the original bill was laid out during the legislative session uh, because there were no African Americans on the Elections Committee. And one of the things that we knew was they were strategically trying, particularly with the Conference Committee, trying to do things at the last minute to make sure that there was no, there were souls to, the, we limit the souls to the polls and things like that. So while they, we walked out to be able to kill a, a, a terrible bill, they are bringing this bill back to continue with the assault on black and brown communities. And I am proud to stand with my colleagues to continue to fight. Uh, I look forward to us supporting uh, the bill that Senator West talked about. But the truth of the matter is that we all believe firmly that there is no voter fraud in this state. So this is a solution in search of a problem. Uh, we should be focused on making voting more accessible, uh, online voter registration, same day registration. Uh, and many of the things that they're trying to do work very well uh, in our community. Uh, the, we had a record turnout in Fort Bend and Harris County. The mobile voting was very, very helpful for many of my constituents and African Americans all over the greater Houston area. Uh, having extended opportunity to vote beyond the seven o'clock or nine o'clock hour was very, very successful. And so now they're trying to curtail things that worked uh, efficiently, effectively for many of our constituents. And we are simply saying that we know that this state is trying to, in ter terms of the leadership, trying to discriminate against black and brown communities. And I'm proud of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus and the Texas State NAACP for fighting against that injustice. We are gonna continue to make good trouble. We're gonna continue to speak truth to power. And we're gonna continue to do everything we can uh, to highlight uh, the, the, uh, the fact that this bill is a solution in search of a problem. So thank you, Chair Collier. Uh, thank you, uh, Gary Bledsoe with the Texas NAACP for standing up for African Americans and Hispanics and underserved communities. And this next census will show that there are more African Americans in, in Texas than any other state in the country. And there is no reason why we're trying to do everything in this state to disenfranchise them when we came so far to end voter suppression and Jim Crow laws. It took many, many, many generations of African Americans whose shoulders we stand on today, fighting, risking their lives to get the Voting Rights Act of 1965 passed. And there's no reason in 2021 we should be trying to turn the clock back to those dark days in our state and in our country. So again, thank you, Chair Collier, and thank you, Gary Bledsoe and all the members of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus for fighting and standing on the right side of history. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. So we are putting out a call. We are asking all Texas voters to come to the Capitol tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for the hearing on these bills. We need to hear from you. We need to hear your voice. Uh, you need to take a stand on the right side of history, like our Vice Chair uh, Reynolds talked about and make sure that people hear from you and know how these measures, these harmful bills will impact your lives. So I would like to bring up, okay, and the Senate starts at 11 a.m. So we're asking members, we're asking Texas voters to come to the Texas House at 8 a.m. and then the Texas Senate starts at 11 a.m. Two different bills, SB1 in the Senate, HB3 here in the House, but I'd like to bring up Representative Jarvis Johnson from Harris County to have a few comments. 
Thank you, Chair Collier and all of the members of the TLBC. As Senator West has already pointed out, we're dealing with a big lie. But the big lie has turned into a big lynching. Anytime that there is a tyrannical government, a government of tyranny, they have to justify their actions with a lie. It's not ironic, it's not coincidental that the day that the governor called on this special session to bring us back to deal with a bill that we as Democrats have already killed, that he and Ken Paxton together went out in search of those that may have been a part of voter fraud. And so they arrested Hervis Rogers and placed him in jail and are using instances like this as their justification for bills like this. Hervis Rogers voted in March of 2020. He was a registered voter. And while he was on parole, he was told that he could vote. He did not know he could not vote. His parole was to end in June of 2020. But Ken Paxton, with his hateful, evil, divisive ways, decided to go and use the big lie to arrest Hervis Rogers and place a $100,000 bond on his head in order to get out. This is not an individual that is harmful to our community or a threat to our community or a danger to our community, and yet he sits in jail with a $100,000 bail. This is the justification for the big lie. This is what's going to happen all across this state and across this nation if we continue to allow this bill to move forward. There's no way we can make this bill better. That's like saying we can make poison taste better. This bill is going to be a lynching to many people in this state, in particular blacks and Hispanics, because we understand where they are going to place these poll watchers to be disruptive in the voting process. This is going to be used to discourage many voters. And so we stand together in unity. But we also want to bring to the attention of this entire state and this nation that we won't allow the governor, we won't allow Ken Paxton, who by himself is under indictment for many allegations of fraud himself, to bring cases against individuals, single individuals like Crystal Mason and Hervis Rogers, one voter not someone who's harvesting votes. I want to emphasize this. This is going to start being the norm. They will use the law to try to intimidate voters from our communities. The message has to be sent that this is not going to be allowed and we will not stand by idly and quietly to allow these type of bills for justification. This is a lynching the same way they had to justify the Tulsa massacre and Emmett Till, they had to create a lie to justify the actions. That's what this bill is. And that's what Hervis Rogers is right now. They're using him as the justification. And I ask that we stand together. I, myself personally, am demanding that Hervis Rogers be released from prison, from jail, and allow this man who stood in line for six hours, works two jobs, and voted at 1 a.m., only to have to get up the next day and go to work at 5. To use that hard-working Texan and hard-working American as an example of what they want to call voter fraud. That's not voter fraud. And by the way, Hervis Rogers was giving a voter registration card upon his release from prison, even though they knew that he was on parole, or he was being released on parole. The criminal system, the prison system, gave the voter registration card. Those are the things that need to stop, and we will stop at nothing to make sure that we will not allow our people to be arrested, harassed during this time. We are taking back Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Johnson. So we're going to close with uh, 
Gary Bledsoe, the Texas NAACP, and then we'll open up for questions. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank all the great members of the caucus who were some of the leaders who led the walkout. I think the, uh, everyone needs to know that was a very difficult thing for them to do, and indeed they, they did it, and they were among the most vocal in trying to make it clear that that was the only avenue that was left to them. I want to make a specific appeal to the people of Texas that if you support democracy, that you will have your voice heard tomorrow. And I don't exaggerate in any form or fashion. The bills that will be heard on Saturday are intended and designed to ensure that one side wins the elections that matter to them. I think we have to understand that democracy requires you to win elections based on the marketplace of ideas and you putting your ideas forth and not you changing rules so that your side is guaranteed to win. If we look through the bill, we can see that it's permeated with racial bias. And I think that's extremely important to note. The first thing to mention about that is to understand that the origin of the bill uh, allegedly is that uh, some voters don't have confidence in the election system in Texas. Well, we know that those are the most rabid anti-minority voters uh, that are antagonistic towards African American and Latinos actually participating in the process. And when we talk about the big lie, I want to add another element to the big lie. And we have to always understand this point when we move forward in trying to understand this legislation. Uh, Texas is majority minority already. It was already 49.4% African American Latino adult population after the 2010 census. 80% uh, of the growth in Texas of the 4 million people that we added in the past 10 years are African American, Latino, and Asian combined. So we're becoming an even browner state than we've been in the past. So the whole idea is to make sure there is no power sharing that takes place. This bill is uh, so mindful, both the bills, I would say uh, just for comment purposes here, that both bills are terrible and will do horrible things. I think the Senate bill may go actually further and be more harmful. Uh, the bills intimidate uh, election workers. You know, election workers are civil servants, but they want to chill them and intimidate them from being able to work and discourage the people that have stood up for minority voters to make sure that the rules were followed, that they be eliminated because now they're going to be under threat of prosecution. The, the intimidation of minority election officials that we have seen in the past has now manifested itself by being written into this bill. A second thing that it does, it empowers partisan poll watchers. When minority election judges this past election would not allow poll watchers to go into private areas and, and, and observe private things in reference to election officials, those poll watchers go to their friends in the legislature and they have a law created that allows them to go wherever they wish in a polling place. And we have just so many examples of racism and bigotry by poll watchers. Uh, I think if many of you have seen the uh, Common Cause video that was leaked, it was clearly bigoted and biased. Let me just finish my list very quickly. Uh, it intimidates voters with all the criminal offenses that would be relating to uh, voters and with our history of discrimination in the criminal justice system against African Americans and Latinos. We can see uh, the significant impact that the criminalization of just voting uh, will actually bring about. 
They intimidate people from assisting voters uh, in several ways. You, there are offenses now created if you assist a voter and make a mistake. But besides that, uh, they uh, require you to provide information. What we have seen in the past is that vigilante groups get a hold of the information about uh, people who were uh, voting absentee, et cetera, and they go and pay visits on them and try to question them and interrogate and intimidate them. So creating these lists that are being created under the bill are being created for nefarious purposes. Those lists will be used to harass and to go after uh, citizens who simply try to be good citizens. They, uh, the, the bill intimidates disabled persons. Uh, we've had a good sensible law, a law that was clarified by the Texas Supreme Court. All Republicans uh, this past summer, when they laid out uh, the criteria, the understanding of the no, uh, 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 the law in Texas is basically don't ask, don't tell, and that anyone who felt that they were in threat or in danger uh, uh, to uh, the coronavirus, et cetera, would be entitled to uh, get an absentee ballot. But now they're changing that. So if you're a disabled voter, okay, you've got to put out your reason. You've got to put your personal business out there. You've got to provide that also to the other person because they want to check the person to help you with you. So they want to use you against the person that helped you by checking what you said compared to what they said. It is really horrible. They have also created a situation where we went to court. We litigated the voter identification law against the state of Texas. And Judge, uh, Judge Ramos in that court came up with a requirement that Texas provide an affidavit to allow voters who had a reasonable impediment that uh, why they couldn't get a voter ID to fill out that voter impediment uh, affidavit. Now they're criminalizing the activity of wrongfully and mistakenly providing those type affidavits to individuals. We think it violates the tenor and the spirit of uh, the, the legislation, the litigation that we were involved in. Uh, the restricting of office hours is clearly unnecessary. These things have always been done locally. So when you try to bring them to the state and tell the st and say that we're going to have one size that fits all, it's unfair. It's unfair. So when you when you say you can't vote after nine o'clock at night, that's going to impact black and brown voters. That's who are going to uh, have the biggest uh, effects of all of this. Um, so we think that the 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 that's problematic with the bill. But if you around the state of Texas uh, want to see our state continue to move in the uh, proper direction and to be an example to the world about how people with different views, et cetera, can get along and, 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 and legislate and cooperate for the, for the improvement of their state, you need to be here. Because if this changes tomorrow and if a narrow group is able to obtain the authority to run this state, then they will run the whole state. And so the laws and things that might protect you, you may be a white citizen in suburbia, but once you cede that authority away to a small group of people that control all the people that are in that legislature, you're gonna regret it. And so we need you. So I'm saying here, your brother needs you, help me. When you need my help, I'll be there for you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bledsoe. Are there any questions? We'll take any questions if you have any questions. Well, thank you so much. Oh, yes. So I think some of the provisions that were in the bill that we voted on um, at the end of the regular session had been taken out. The provision that would make it easier, I think, for a judge to overturn an election, and also some changes to Sunday voting, I think the hours are moving forward. What do you make of those changes um, moving forward? Uh, well, we'd like to think that they saw the error of their ways. Uh, they knew that those were uh, outright wrong. They were not fair provisions. They were, uh, you know, self-serving provisions. Uh, so, you know, we like to think that that's the reason. Uh, that's just the right thing. You know, it doesn't need to be in this bill. It doesn't need to be in any bill uh, when, when you're talking about elections because it does not, they do not promote uh, voter access and promote access to the ballot. 
uh, those provisions. In fact, um, you know, allowing one judge to overturn uh, a bill, uh, you know, a, a election is just outlandish. And, and my my personal take was that it was a purposeful purposeful provision by Elizabeth Alvarez, who would benefit from that based on a case that she was handling in Dallas County. And, and, and Madam Chair, you might yeah. mention also you were on the conference committee, and that possibility still exists. So even if those All right. the, are and, and that's another thing. You know, this bill, these are just the filed versions of these bills. There are still, uh, you know, the process that has to, that takes place where if there's a different bill, they got to pass both chambers. So when these bills cross over, there's a chance that they could be changed. And, and, and added, it had adding more harmful provisions. So we have to be mindful. There, there, would, there could be a conference committee, and there's no guarantee that there will be a person of color uh, on that conference committee. So we still have grave concerns uh, about this bill. Uh, you, be, be aware of a wolf in sheep, sheep's clothing. HB3, SB1, that's the wolf. Any other questions? Thank you.